is a collection of shiny balls. The nucleus is composed of blue neutrons and red protons, with green electrons dancing around in orbit. At least, that's what you'd think if you believed everything the pictures told you. Quantum theory made a mockery of this model some time ago, but we still cling on to our balls. In a single human body, there are 7,000 quadrillion atoms, a number so large that the average person develops repetitive strain injury while writing it. So, can you imagine my reaction when I saw a game hyped with the phrase Every Atom Procedural? Man's Sky, go anywhere, encounter unique flora, encounter unique fauna, encounter unique rocks, trade with other species, encounter unique rocks, swim in the sea, fly in the air, sting like a bumblebee. I treated the hype and wild speculation with a contempt deserved. And because of this, I thought I was the perfect person to give it a fair and balanced shake when the real hate started. Because I hated No Man's Sky when everyone loved the idea, I thought I might love No Man's Sky when everyone hated the reality. If that's clear. But my time with No Man's Sky was like a loveless marriage. I'd disappear inside its universe, go through the motions for a couple of hours, but feel empty after pulling out. It became increasingly difficult to keep going. An astro hamster running on an enormous galactic wheel to a procedurally generated nowhere. How did it come to this? I, the quintessential explorer player who loves a bit of the old explorer and adore, unable to find joy amongst the stars. No Man's Sky is supposedly an indie game. It's made by a small team with proper love. But No Man's Sky snowballed into something more. Is an indie with marketing support from Sony still indie? Is an indie turned cultural phenomenon still indie? Do we get to apply different degrees of critical torture, depending on the indiness? Look, No Man's Sky clearly isn't quarries of squared indie. You're almost out. Look at that hall. Come on, be safe under the rocks. Don't make a mistake. Don't screw up. Don't screw up. Don't screw up. Don't. Screw up. Don't... It isn't even recursed indie. Now pay close attention, okay? We're jumping inside this chest inside your room. We need to get the key to that door at the top left. But the key is too heavy. We can't carry it now. So, we have to get rid of the key to stop it. Go up there to the green thing. And the green thing will give us a copy of the room in a jar. So that jar contains a copy of the room. So we'll take the jar, the copy of the room, inside the room. Okay, so drop it by the key. Get the key. Jump inside the copy of the room and... Ta-da! Look at that! Isn't that amazing? Yeah! Uh, did you follow? But is it right to exert the same withering gaze we used for Bioshock Infinite and No Man's Sky? After the hype train crashed and burned, should we join the crowds yelling for the head of lead director of No Man's Sky, Sean Murray? The truth is, No Man's Sky version 2016 was made over four years by the little indie that could. A small team trying to do something novel, something never seen before, something no one has ever been crazy enough to do before. And after seeing the response, Never f***ing do again. But what is that exactly? What do you do in No Man's Sky? You shoot rocks. Hang on, buddy. You're getting ahead of yourself. The player started out on a planet beside a crashed ship with an orange ball in a box. 
No Man's Sky then trained us to collect as many rocks as we could fit inside a small handbag. No Man's Sky was supposed to be a survival experience, but... Whoa, what's that? Non-unique mechanic encountered. The sighted mechanic is not unique to resolve this problem. Check history. Uh, I, I guess. Okay, then. Alone and far from home. A lost astronaut makes a perilous journey through uncharted space. With limited resources and alien technology, how long can you survive out there? Okay, okay, let's move on. Music, please. No Man's Sky was supposed to be a survival experience, but Hold the Phone, also a chill game. So the small team of Halo Games stepped back from making a brutal bean counting experience like Roguelike out there. The universe became flush with shootable rocks, and death was never the end. This means resource gathering was robbed of meaning and became busy work. To add to the joy, while common resources stacked in inventory slots, rare items needed a whole slot, presumably because they needed space bubble wrap to keep them intact. So we hoarded rocks until we could sell them for the highest price, allowing us to buy a bigger ship that allowed us to hoard more rocks so we could sell them for the highest price, allowing us to buy an even bigger ship. Welcome, my friends, to the holy loop of modern game design. May our divine faith in ascending numbers never perish. This gave me pause. Maybe I had made a mistake. Maybe there really was no traditional game meat on the bones of this beast. But that's okay, because I'm an explorer, yeah? Come on, don't give up. I could still love this. I could still call this absolutely wonderful. Anyway, as we found planets untouched by human hand, the game invited us to name our discoveries. T oh, God's sake. What next? A hard drive failure? Ugh. Explore uncharted space. Contemplate the void. On every planet, a puzzle. Solve the puzzle, name the planet. Together, the players will map the stars and locate the anomaly. Jesus, at last! Hit it. Okay, we're still back in 2016. No Man's Sky encouraged us to name our discoveries. Aside from the fact that this got super boring in a universe of 18 quintillion planets, it was pretty weird. Because this apparently unexplored void was alive with activity. Ships constantly skittered across the sky and other races had already smothered the great unknown with research stations and trading outposts. But hey, somehow I've discovered it. Woohoo! Some have suggested it was colonialism the game. But really, it was just another rocky marriage of game design and story. And why bother anyway? At least in the pocket galaxy of Mirror Moon, you could be certain of someone seeing your handiwork. But okay, perhaps more benefit of the doubt is needed. We could just discover. And yet, No Man's Sky interrupts our chillin' with constant inventory management. Sorry, you haven't shut up enough rocks to leave this planet. Please, find more rocks first. No, not those ones, these ones. 
and sometimes you would be jacket of procedurally generated luck, the planet harsh, the rock sparse. And thus, No Man's Sky hoped to be the ultimate chill game, yet... Christ! I think I'll just give up and play Cultist Simulator for three hours! This island is a musical instrument that you play with your feet. Stay with the animals, climb the peaks, and never, ever leave. I suppose there's a, there's a few reference points, but I don't know if any of these particularly cover everything. So, obviously there's Minecraft is kind of a big exploration game, uh, but doesn't have the sort of same musical interaction. Uh, Noctis is a procedural generated universe simulator. That... That is it. That is a f***ing god of last straw. No one is ever going to see this film. You're sadly mistaken if you think I'm waiting 20 seconds for something interesting to happen. But this film was never really about No Man's Sky. Uh, will you finally add guns in Proteus 2 so we can shoot the wildlife? Guess when I didn't work today. I wore a bomb. A nuclear bomb in a field of flowers. I could get lucky. Tomorrow I could have the bigger bomb. It was when I saw someone shoot down some harmless flying critters so they could be scanned and bagged for a few credits that I could no longer ignore the design inconsistencies. It's clear that No Man's Sky is Frankenstein's game. A chill game in which you destroy things. An exploring game which stops you to collect rocks. Different systems inside its sleek frame were fighting amongst themselves and players knew it. So for better or for worse, here are the nominees for this year's Innovation Award. Innovation Award. At GDC 2017, Hello Games didn't stick around for the awards, choosing to have a team dinner. They certainly weren't expecting to pick up an award for innovation, and then... No Man's Sky. This lovely trophy going once. It's made of uh, Nickelodeon slime, it's beautiful. Nobody? Okay, I'm gonna just headlander, I'm gonna give that to headlander, save that. Okay, no, we'll, <laughs> I'm gonna accept this on the, uh, behalf of Hello Games, and congratulations to them. And now I'm gonna walk off stage like I planned that whole thing. You're probably thinking, how can they win the Innovation Award when everything has been done before and done better elsewhere? Archaica is a laser reflection game released in 2017. I enjoyed its restful mix of mechanics and presentation, but it's not original. There have been light deflecting games since the beginning of time, right? Archaica's Polish developers, Two Mammoths, told me that they took inspiration from Sean Barrett's Chromatron, released in 2002. Did Chromatron originate the idea? Apparently not. Barrett told me he got the idea from a flash game he saw in 2001. Except this Flash game was a ripoff that literally copied the levels of Argon Deluxe by Twilight Games released the same year, a follow-up to their original title Argon, released in 1999. Was Argon the original? Steve Verreaux, 
co-founder of Twilight Games, tells me their direct inspiration was The Incredible Machine from 1993. That game doesn't feature lasers, but is about assembling Rube Goldberg machines. That would seem to be the end of the story. But unbeknownst to Twilight Games, reflector mechanics originally surfaced in 1987, with both Deflector on the ZX Spectrum and Laser Chess published in Compute Magazine. I even tried to write a Laser Chess clone myself. Game design family trees go back a lot further than you might think. Chris Bateman recently wrote a paper with Jose Zagal that traced the origins of Minecraft's inventory screen all the way back to tabletop gaming. Because uh, I look a lot at the influence of uh, tabletop role-playing games on video games, um, which is an influence that uh, I, when I first started talking about, people kind of denied. Uh, there was an awful lot of resistance to the idea that I was suggesting that the influence on video games uh, had come more predominantly from tabletop and particularly from the RPGs than from the arcade games. And it's not that the arcade games didn't have influence, because clearly they did, uh, but if you start looking at specific aspects of design, you start seeing that uh, the lineages you can trace from one game to the next a huge number lead back to Dungeons and Dragons and the early tabletop games and before them to uh, the battle games, the Avalon Hill battle games of the uh, late 50s and 60s. And I was really struck and what I really wanted to talk about when I started talking about the inventory was um, Dungeon Master. Uh, Dungeon Master in 1986 I think uh, because the, that entire project had come in with two game designers who were tabletop role players and who were fans of early computer role playing games like uh, like Ultima and Wizardry and they wanted to make a game like that but the other members of the team had no experience of those styles of games whatsoever and kept challenging them why why are we doing this this way this is a really weird thing to do and they were doing it because it's what they'd learnt from the games they'd already played but when they were challenged on it they started to come up with new ways to put it together and they came up with this grid inventory, which is very similar to the way that the WIMP interface on computers, the Windows icon mice pointer interface on computers, uh, was coming in with the Atari ST and other similar computers at the time. And it was influenced from that, the interface design, that changed the player practices of uh, inventories towards a different way of organizing it, this grid inventory that we still have now and is still uh, right there prominently in Minecraft. In 2012, Varen's Kurth Phil was released, a 3D snake-like that had a hidden meaning, a meditation on how game designs reproduce and mutate using Blockade, the original snake, as a case study. The theme is prevalent throughout. The snake starts as blocks, reflecting its humble origins. The snake sometimes appears as pseudo-DNA, carrying game design genetic code. It also contains a secret documentary for those willing to dig for it. So you see, originality is overrated. Not even the film you're watching right now contains a single brand new thought. I even ripped myself off. This is the film Eulogy for an Atari Childhood I made in 2011. The final scene represents new game flowers growing from the remains of the old. What you think is all yours is actually the results of many hands. It leaves us with tricky questions of what constitutes the artist's contribution and when their work is plagiarism. But every game is both descendant of past game design, an ancestor of future design in an infinite field of flowers. No Man's Sky was an experiment. It was an exploration of uncharted space, uncharted game design space. 
and as the modern game can be patched and updated, Halo games have worked to address No Man's Sky's shortcomings. The No Man's Sky of 2016 no longer exists. They Frankenstein some more, threw in more story, base building, more complexity for those still seeking the everything game. But they also de-Frankensteined, offering players alternative modes to strip out the contradictions, such as a permadeath mode and a creative mode. So does that mean I now love No Man's Sky? No. It has dodgy interface issues and the classic game still embraces enough busy work to fill a septic tank. Then does that mean I hate it? No. While the original hype promise of the Everything game still rankles, it remains important that No Man's Sky is here with us. It may not be the game I wanted, but there are players who find its ever-expanding universe an absolute delight, and the busy work reduces with progress. But most importantly, it will illuminate the way for others. Just like the creations of Tale of Tales, such as The Path and Beyond Tolete, you may not find them to your taste, but they have been inspirational to other developers such as Frictional Games, who made the chilling horror experiences Amnesia and Soma. It's also why demanding platforms like Steam only stock gold-plated titles is a bad idea, because it's a little bit like carrying a nuclear bomb into a field of flowers. The seeds of new game design will not grow if they are kept in a dark closet. No Man's Sky is technically astonishing and occasionally takes your breath away. It gets more astonishing with every year, but remember No Man's Sky is an amalgam of other designs. We should not ignore other ambitious works which will serve as inspirations for a future No Man's Sky style magnum opus. Look to the imperfect, the unusual, the unpolished, as well as the beautiful failures. It is there you will find the future. Subscribe and share if you enjoyed this film.